Five years ago, a group of journalists at The Guardian in London committed themselves to the anti-FGM movement. They called it the global media campaign to end FGM. Their aim was to use media play to turn FGM into a global media priority. We as a paper have committed ourselves to an international campaign to eradicate FGM. I will add my voice and my strength uh, to a very noble campaign. It's a very creative uh, way of raising the awareness. Guardian journalists and those who worked alongside them had between them over 80 years' experience of international journalism, stretching from the first Gulf War in the 1990s via Bosnia and Rwanda and the Ebola crisis. They had all seen at first hand how media worked to either inflame or to help contain, but also how media campaigns like this one for contraception in Afghanistan could really work. But a year into their media campaign, they realized their main target had to be to serve the local media in the communities where girls were being cut by supporting this local media who tell these stories best. So over the last five years, we developed a media FGM strategy in three key stages. Firstly, we run a high level national FGM gathering in each country, bringing together the top echelons of society to make ending FGM a national priority. Stage two, we run a five day intensive media campaign academy aimed at getting the most powerful media, religious leaders and activists involved in fighting against FGM. So we've equipped all these activists brought from all across the country with the tools from social media, the kind that can actually help them revolutionize and catalyze their ideas. And we're hoping it doesn't just stop in their county, but it'll move to the country, and more importantly, the continent. Would you ever do it to your child? Would you ever allow anybody to do it? Imagine. What for? Sorry to take you that, but I have to show it. It changed, it changed everything. It changed my perception. And I'm not going to let my daughter undergo FGM. And I am ready to do something about it. Uh, through the campaign academies that uh, we've had in Kenya, and we've had a huge media coverage. Back home at The Guardian's global media campaign to end FGM sponsored an art competition, the first of its kind in the area, to design a poster warning of the dangers of female genital mutilation. Like, it has made a big difference. A big difference. The third stage, and perhaps the most crucial, is the overseeing and funding of three years of small direct action grants to help graduates from the Media Campaign Academy amplify and spread the message on every radio and TV station in their country. Our media support work began in Gambia in 2014, where over 30 years of relentless campaign work on FGM had led to no shift in the 74% prevalence rate of FGM. But when the media campaign started, things began to change, especially when the Gambian-born special advisor to the global media campaign, Jaha Dukure, hit the headlines worldwide. While being filmed, President Jame, who had never spoken publicly about FGM during his entire 22-year reign, surprised everyone by announcing an immediate ban. FGM is banned as from today from the surface of this country. By the end of 2018, working with partners that had so far included UNFPA, UNICEF, Save the Children and PLAN will have carried out 10 media campaign academies in seven countries, as well as three national FGM gatherings. We will have brought the global media campaign to support media in Kenya, the Gambia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Puntland, Somalia and Mali. We will have introduced over 105 prominent religious leaders to the power of using the media to end FGM, trained over 245 key media gatekeepers on FGM, and will be supporting over 126 media activists with direct action media grants to engage with communities about the harms of FGM on local radios, TVs and social media. By December 2018, the global media campaign will have reached over 510 million people across the world with anti-FGM media messages. 
the campaign's learning can be summarised in five key points. One, media works best and has legacy when supporting existing media and government institutions, especially free-to-air state TV services. Two, the right media messages and news stories for ending FGM are generated from within the community, not by outsiders. This film made by the Somali campaigner Ifra Ahmed, which reported for the first time on the death of girls in Somalia from FGM. This was seen on prime time TV by over 10.4 million Somalis in Somalia and also abroad. Learning point three. Collective abandonment requires putting religious leaders, chiefs and medics on the media simultaneously. Learning point four, media messaging works best around key dates or events. For example, the International Day of Zero Tolerance for FGM or International Day of the Girl Child. And point number five, the setting up of a digital home for the newly created anti-FGM media campaigners on WhatsApp. WhatsApp itself being a revolutionary media tool. Another advantage of this training is that it can and is being adapted to tackle other issues, such as child marriage and teenage pregnancies. Also, community radio and local TV can be very cheap. It costs just $53 a minute to broadcast on state TV in Mali. Even private TV in Mali, such as Africa Bull, only charges $158. This short TV ad went out over 20 times last December in Sierra Leone. It was broadcast relentlessly just ahead of the news bulletin. It cost just $800 to make. Finally, Luciang Ganda is the head of TV in Sierra Leone, one of the country's best known journalists and an active part of the global media campaign to end FGM. If we are able to defeat the Ebola outbreak, we are able to defeat the polio disease through the media, I believe FGM could also be defeated through media campaign.